All right, a couple of you guys have been asking me about the range and how I built it, meaning the gun range behind my barn. So we're gonna talk about the cost associated with that and how I kind of built it. Now I'm not gonna claim that it's the prettiest range. And I'm not gonna claim it's the most efficient range, but it's the range that I had the ability to build pretty quickly. So first off, the location of it, right? So um, barn's right there. That's the back of the barn. That's the back door of it. If you're interested in videos of my barn, I've got a crap ton of those. Right, so there's gonna be a concrete pad like I've talked about that comes off the back. And then the range is, I believe, I think it's 30 yards off the back pretty much. So it's pretty close. Um, the purpose for that being was I wanted the ability to work out and shoot at the same time for some upcoming competitions we're gonna do. And so we decided to put the barn right by, or the barn, the range right behind it, not the barn. That's a longer build than this was. Okay, so for the range, uh, pretty simple. Um, I would gotten a couple quotes on building a range from a couple different people, looked up some general ideas of how to build it. Um, this is the range I built. To clarify, it's mostly gonna be me and maybe a few other people that I trust. Um, so if you're building a range for a public range, it's gonna have to look a lot different, be a lot safer. Um, I'm not just gonna have random people come out and shoot in the range show, just to clarify that off the bat as a disclaimer. All right, so pretty simple how I did it. Um, I had the ability of um, borrowing a skid steer from a local landscaping company. The guy I, uh, owns it, goes to our CrossFit gym, really nice guy, let me borrow it for, a, for an afternoon. And all that it really required, I'll, start, I'll show you how we started it off, was the first thing we did, this is the back of the, pro, back of the range, is we actually dug about a foot, a foot trench in the, on the bottom of the ground, right? So you put a foot, foot deep, it was about six and a half or seven foot wide. That's because the diameter of these round bells was about six and a half feet. And then we had, we so we first we dug it out with a um, with the skid steer and then we took out the skid steer, front end loader, switched it out for, it was actually a pallet jack, or not pallet jack, like a pallet thingy-majiggy. Again, I'm no expert at building things, okay? Pallet thingy, you know? Um, and we moved the round bells. I had round bells on my property. You can't really see it. We've looked through those trees way back there. There's some round bells on the other side of that tree line. And so I have about 30 round bells on my property. So we brought five of them over, dropped them on the ground, and then he kind of shoved them in the hole and laid them in the hole. The purpose of the hole in the back was so they wouldn't ever slide since the ones in the back stop, the bottom ones are going to take the most brunt of the dirt. I didn't want them to like get shoved back. Now, I don't think that was going to happen, but I wanted to make sure that I... I knew it wasn't gonna happen. Like I, I was guaranteed it wasn't gonna happen by digging that trench. So he dug the trench first, dug out the trench, uh, mostly put the dirt off the side at the end of the trench, and then he put all the bales in it, all five of the bales in it. And then from there, we switched out the, the pallet thingy, majiggy, right? Back for the front end loader, and essentially just scraped dirt from all over here back up into the backstop. So this, what you can't really tell on the phone, it's kind of a little bit hard to tell, but we actually scraped up a lot of dirt and just shoved it off and leveled it and brought it up here. The first thing we did was scrape it all out, shove it up against the round bales, and then he kind of went back through and kind of leveled it. I mean, I don't really need it too level, but somewhat level is nice. We're gonna come back through with some gravel later. But for right now, the ground's so frozen, this is okay. I don't, I'm okay with just the frozen ground, it's not going anywhere. So after we shoved it up on the sides and the front as much as we could, um, the goal of it, now it's not a perfect range, right? Because I want to make sure that most of my rounds that I'm shooting don't go into the round bells, because the, the bottom one, because I don't want them to get messed up over time. Although they are going to deteriorate after time, it's not going to last forever, to clarify. This is just a simple solution for like an interim solution for like a year, pretty much. But near the top of this mound, there's not really, there's not enough dirt to stop round, just to clarify that. The round bell will stop it, but... My goal was that the dirt was gonna stop all the rounds and then maybe the round bell was gonna have to stop it, but the less I have the round bell stopping it, the better. Um, so the top, I would love if I get more dirt and make it more slope so that when I'm shooting, I have the ability to shoot near the top and I know it's not gonna go in the round bell because right now it definitely is. Um, so I'm gonna get some more dirt in the future for right now. This is a great solution. It's just honestly, it's too cold right now to get anything out here. Um, so then we got some more round bells. We got four of them and put it near the top, um, kind of, just mix match jam so you know these round bells are in between the bells the bells on the bottom the purpose of that being that way if i have a shot that goes too high you know i'm safe i just want to make sure to be as safe as i possibly can that way i don't have i don't want to ever shoot and then not where not know where a round is going so i know that these rounds are always going to go in either dirt or a round bell um these are not going to hopefully don't have to get hit by rounds that often 
but they're there just in case. So pretty simple. Um, overall, uh, the range shouldn't cost you that much money. I think by the time I put gravel in, um, I think we're gonna we figure out the square footage. I don't remember off the top of my head. It'll probably cost about $500 for the whole thing. Um, so it's not terrible. And like I said, it's a good interim solution just for me. It's not a public range for people to come use, but for my own purpose of uses, it'll fit. So hopefully that answers you guys' questions. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day. It's really cool.